Hi everyone, hopefully it's recording now. I can never tell when it starts on this thing, so. My name is Tessa, she's right here. And welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going over my trades. Now, not all of them were on my watch list. Um, morning pants haven't been working as well as they were in the past, and trading's a lot slower. Um, but I still want to talk about how I'm trying to adapt. So, my first trade <laughs> was on auto, A U T O. So, let's see if I can get it pulled up here. If you look down at the bottom left of my screen, it, it says that I'm connected, but then it says it's connecting. So, this is what I've been working with. On auto, I saw it spiking right in right here, and so I missed this entry right there at 327. So then I wanted to mainly see it, it, okay, so right here. I didn't get this one because there's resistance right there. Then I was like, well, right here. So I didn't get in uh, right down here because I wanted to see if it would break out there with the volume. And I figured if it could break that, then maybe it could retest the 385 level. And um, I tried it getting in at... I got in at 3.36, so it was right in this area. I didn't, I didn't even see it spike up here, because when I got in, it spiked to about 3.38 and then panicked down to the 3.14 level. I was like, darn it, well, that would have been a dip by opportunity. Of course, it didn't happen until right when I get in. And then I waited a little bit longer. It spiked to the 330s. I'm like, eh, I'll just cut my loss right there. I'm not going to hold and hope for it to go back. Although I probably should have. Because then it spiked up to the 350s. Could have taken a small profit. But. Oh, I got in at 344. And sold at 336. Yeah, so I did get in right up here when it did break that 338 level. I thought so. Yeah, because right after I bought it tanked down, because I didn't remember being up on that stock, like, but one penny. And it tanked right in here. I know it's hard to see. And so from being up from 344 and it going down to 316, I'm like, oh my. Well, that would have been a perfect dip by opportunity. I'm like, all right, well, I'm not in a huge panic. There's support right around here. It should bounce because that would be a great dip by opportunity. And it did. And that's when I got out at, was it, 3.36, yeah. So I'm like, eh, it's less than 10 cent loss. So I'll, I'll, I'll just take the loss. And then, of course, it went to 3.54. I wasn't going to just keep holding and hoping that would spike back up, which... <sighs> I could say that I should have, but the way with the price action was, I just I didn't want to trust it necessarily, especially with the way the stocks have been going. <sighs> and the fact that I missed the panic all the way down here, I wasn't going to hope that it would get back so where I could possibly break even and take a profit. No, the best opportunity was when it panicked down to support, buying around 320 and then selling in the 330, 340 area. So I wasn't even, eh. It didn't keep going and gradually go up, so not what I wanted to be in. So then I was just checking my watch list, which you can see right here. I usually have this as my daily watch list. The stocks over here are what I have overall. So I went to LXU. And it was right here. It was only like 5% panic, which I talk about wanting a minimum of 10% panic, but I've been trying to um, adapt to the markets. Turns out it did go down roughly 10%. Um, did 
down to the twos, which I think, let's see, Safari, Alex, you. I want to pan down to the two-ish area with gold making 10 to 15 cents on the bounce, maybe in spike above 250, oh, in case it broke out. Um, so it did go down to the twos, um, 210, and there was only about 12 cents of upside, but it just wasn't a panic like I wanted and so say I forced it I got in at three, 231 because it started to spike there's the little green uh, but I didn't pay attention to how little a volume this is 6,000 shares shouldn't have been in it but I guess you could say I wanted some action but it wasn't necessarily that I thought that okay well, the market's changing. Maybe it'll gradually just keep going up. It's <sighs> always yawning. But it didn't go up, so uh, it went to 336 or 335. I put my sell at 340 originally, canceled that, saw the price action going down, so I just sold it, I think, at 233, 232. Yeah. And then GEVO, gosh, if only I stayed in, no. <laughs> so GEVO, oh wait, is panicking right there? Is that real? Oh, okay, so yeah, dang it, it's up here. My phone says it's at 193, laptop says it's at one. 29 that let's see we got this that would be a great panic to dip by into wait unless there's bad news when did the news come out 32 minutes ago geo shares tripled said it entered into a branding renewable hydro purchase agreement with volume stock 570 said the agreement's long term take a pay contract large contract under Chiffy's swift tip delivery of 25 renewable hydrocarbons and Julius swift tip blah. It's kind of starting in, oh, volume for system starting in 2023. It's part of the first month of carbon fuels. We agree on solar sun conditions and geocorrence that are just running out of funds. We contract. Uh, so that's good news, but it panicked, so did they do an offering? But as you can see, nothing, I mean, it's not moving. So that would be a perfect panic though, 216 to the 129. Is it halted? I don't know when this data was. Well, see, this is why, um, well, gosh, move. Oh, that's so frustrating. Work, just connecting. Why does it say connecting? Ah, frustrating. Um, so, GEVO, I originally bought in at 113. So that was way back here way back here in this area because I've seen this I've seen this a ton but I don't trade these breakouts very often enough to know like hey just hold it I, I didn't break my risk level down to the 107s I just don't have the experience then my internet was doing this and so also looking at it it was super up on the day. I, I shouldn't be trading stocks that are up over 100% on the day. See, it's a huge first green day, and I bought in right around here, um, which could have been a resistance level, and so I thought that maybe it could break above and go to like the 120s, and if it goes there, maybe it could retest the 150 area, and so that's what I was looking for. And then I figured maybe if it could break 150, it could keep going. So that was 
a good idea. And like I said, I've been looking for this gradual uptrend for a while, just usually um, my kid's awake, so I don't see this action to be comfortable with this enough. The volume's there, pretty dang perfect, and so this is where I mess up. 113, it drops to 107. I didn't like it, so I sell at 114. How stupid. And I'm like, well, maybe if I wait for this to break out above this level, then I'll buy it. And that's what I did. It broke the next level. So I bought in at 119, uh, 119 basically. And then it went up, it went down. I'm like, ah, internet. Maybe I shouldn't be in the stock. It's chasing. It's up over 100%. Maybe it can't. Look at all these sellers. Because I couldn't trust the level 2. There was like 30,000, 100,000. Uh, this side kept taking out that side, that side taking out this side. I couldn't rely on my level 2. It was madness. There's 40,000, 50,000. This one's taking out that one. Then there's 70,000 here, 30,000 here. It's just like... <laughs> Double chin. I don't know what to do. So, I get out. And then the next one, um, I'm like, okay, if it breaks this level, it should be able to go up here. So I got in at 127. And it's like, well, shoot. I can't tell, because it was going up from 127 down to 120. It's just... <sighs> Plus the internet issues. It's like, gosh darn it, I'm stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I was like, I shouldn't chase this. Is this chasing? But it's gradually uptrending. Uh, so I got out at 128. Then I'm like, okay, now if it breaks this level, I'll get in. I could have been up 20, 30 cents a share for a great trade. And oh, mind you, on my first trade, I was down like $8. And so total now I'm up 69 cents. Ooh. Um, I should have just trusted myself and stayed in at 113 and sold at 139. Um, and just trusted my plan, trust the process. But see how I don't, it's still stuck right here. I don't know why, but um, it went to the twos. <gasps> Anyways, I got in at 127, or no, 132, internet does this, it's not moving, I'm waiting for it to connect, waiting, 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 I'm checking my phone like you see right now, I type in GEVO, oh, now it's at 175, but on this, it's like at 135, I'm like, hmm, okay, I'll keep waiting, then I see it's at 139, I'm like, alright, it's not connecting. I'll just sell for the, the gain while I have it. And with my internet doing this, it's like, well, fudge. Um, so I sold at 139. That gets executed. And so it went up to two, past two, went up to 217. So, and then this would have been panic to dip buy into because then I saw that on my phone it went to the 190s. I have no idea what's going on with this stock right now. And I thought my internet issues were fixed. Getting 98% 98 connectivity or whatever. So I just don't know what's going on. And this is what I'm left with. Or maybe it is working and it's just halted. I don't know. My phone says one thing. This says another thing. That still says it's connecting. I don't know. But I was on the right track with this one. I cut my losses quickly on the other ones. Took singles. This one, I quite frankly just don't have experience with perfect charts like this. I've been focusing so much on morning panic dip buys. And so I'm trying to learn to adapt to this new strategy of just gradually uptrending and taking singles. And so... Um, I did some things right, did some things wrong, um, yeah, I probably would have traded this with a lot more patience had I had reliable internet, I want to say, um, 
but I definitely would. I'm happy with my last single, even though it's not very much. I probably would have possibly. See, if I would have stayed in from 113, but it was just so hard because I couldn't rely on level 2, and that's where I have to trust the pattern. But then the patterns do this randomly, where they panic like that. So that's why it's important to lock in singles. And mind you, I didn't even find this on E-Trade. Um, I went into the uh, Twitter, actually, and I saw a challenge student trade it. I'm like, oh, let me check out this stock. Oh, wait, I recognize this pattern. Let me try it. And then I went and chat, and Tim started saying how it's a choppy stock, this, and other stuff. I'm like, ooh, uh, perhaps I'm chasing this, but it's the patterns that I've seen. So, just moral of the story, I suppose. Cut losses quickly. Take singles. They add up. Um, internet issues suck. And I gotta figure this out. Cause this sucks. <laughs> Even though I... I don't know. So, I don't know where I'm going with this, but that is how I royally messed up G-E-V-O um, but actually it really wasn't that bad because like I said considering how I had eight dollars in losses I did make back those losses by trading smart cautiously taking singles so it only shows 69 cents but that's actually almost like a ten dollar gain off of hundred shares I can't complain about that. So, all in all, cut losses quickly and singles that up. Have a great day. <laughs>